Thank you for your interest in applying to the Police Property Fund Small Grant Scheme. Here are some things you may wish to know when thinking about applying into the scheme. This is the second call for applications to the Small Grant Scheme. The total fund available is £100,000. Your organisation must be constituted to be eligible to apply into the scheme and you can apply for between £1,000 and £10,000 for your project. Your proposed project must not be funded by any other public funds, however you can apply if, as an organisation, you are funded by public funds for other projects. Your project must meet the scheme's eligibility criteria, namely, it must align to one or more of the charitable purposes stated in the guidance, it must demonstrate engagement with the Police Service of Northern Ireland, and it must make a contribution to community safety and or building confidence in policing in your area. Your organisation must be financially stable to enable you to manage the funds appropriately. The scheme will not support applications that request less than £1,000 or more than £10,000, individual or private sector businesses, state funded organisations such as schools, local authorities or hospitals, politically based activities, projects led by the PSNI or PCSPs, events or activities for which the principal aim is to fundraise for other organisations, capital funding defined as assets over a value of £1,000, for example CCTV equipment, vehicles, building works, renovations or structures. The fund will also not support salaries, overheads or running costs unless they are integral to the project and projects where the lead partner is based outside Northern Ireland. In applying to the scheme only one application per project can be submitted at any one time. If successful you will be issued with a letter of offer and standard conditions of grant which you must adhere to. You will receive 80% of your project costs up front. You will be required to provide evidence of expenditure to the programme team as agreed within your letter of offer. A further 10% of the project costs will be paid on project completion. You will be required to produce a post-project evaluation for your project. Depending on the length of your project, you may also be required to provide a progress report during implementation. The final 10% of your project costs will be paid on receipt of the project evaluation. An application form can be downloaded from the Policing Board website. You should complete the downloaded version in font no smaller than Arial 10. Each area of the application form has a maximum word count. You should ensure that the application form is fully completed as incomplete application forms will not proceed to assessment. The application period is for 12 weeks. You should note the closing date and time as late applications will not be accepted. To assist with completion, you should read the Guidance for Applicants document on the Board's website. I will now take you through the application form, starting with Section 1. In this section, we want some details about you and your project. Complete the name of your organisation, its address, including postcode, and the date your organisation was constituted. Don't forget that a copy of your organisation's constitution should be sent in with your completed application form. If this is not received, your application will be rejected. Tell us the title of your project. To allow us to keep in touch with you, please tell us who the main contact for the project will be and include their email address, postal address, including their postcode and their contact number. You should also provide the position they hold in your organisation. Also, let us know if you have any project partners. As the Policing Board provides funding and support to policing and community safety partnerships in each council, we'd like to know if your local PCSP is involved in your project. Finally in this section, confirm by ticking this box that the project is not receiving funding from any other public source. If this box is not ticked, we will assume that it is and the application will be deemed ineligible. Moving to section 2. In this section, we want to know more about your project and how it meets the scheme's eligibility criteria. You should first provide a brief overview of your project proposal. This should include its aims and objectives, its key elements and what it intends to achieve. Whilst this section is not scored, it should provide the assessment panel with sufficient information to describe your proposed project. You should indicate the expected duration of your project. 
It is sufficient to indicate the month and year for each, as the exact date will depend on the date you receive your letter of offer. You should note that the assessment process will take between four to six weeks, and if successful, the contracting period will take three to four weeks. Therefore, your start date should not be before the 18th of July, 2022. Next, we want to see how your project proposal fits with the scheme's eligibility criteria. These areas will be scored. Firstly, describe the level and type of engagement your project has had and will have with the PSNI. For example, they may have co-designed the project, be a project partner, they may be delivering parts of the project, or they may be attending your events. Projects that cannot demonstrate that they have already engaged with the PSNI are unlikely to meet the approval threshold. Next, please outline how your project will make a contribution to community safety and or confidence in policing in your area. For example, through the provision of diversionary activities for young people, through activities with vulnerable people or through PSNI engagement with hard to reach communities. Remember, these should link with the charitable purposes that your project aligns to. You should also indicate how the contribution will be measured and reported at project end. More details on this will be required under Section 4 of the application form. Finally, you must let us know which of the charitable purposes your project proposal aligns to. This can be more than one, and briefly describe how it aligns to the charitable purposes selected. On to Section 3. It is important that your organisation has the capacity to manage the funding. Therefore, in this section, you need to tell us the total amount of funding you requested. In completing the financial information, you are also required to provide a detailed budget breakdown by completing Appendix 1 of the application form. Applications that do not provide a detailed breakdown of budget will not be able to be scored for value for money and are unlikely to be approved. Let us know if there is any match funding being provided. Applicants should note that match funding is not a requirement. Let us know if there are any in-kind contributions, for example staff time, or use of resources, etc. Again, this is not a requirement. You should then give us information about the financial contact for your project. This will be the person that the programme team will liaise with in relation to management of the funding, including claims. You must confirm by ticking this box that you're in a position to provide the most recent official accounts for the organisation. These will be requested as part of pre-contract checks if you've been approved for funding. If you are approved and fail to provide a set of official accounts, your application will be removed from the process. Finally, you should provide us with information on your financial controls, which should include details of financial or governance procedures or frameworks in place in your organisation. This information will assist us in establishing your capacity for managing the funding that you have requested. On to Section 4. In this section, we are interested in learning about the expected outcomes and impacts of your project and what measurements you will use to report these. This should include expected beneficiaries like young people, older people and community groups, for example, and any expected change that may occur as a result of the project's activity. You should also tell us how you will communicate success within your community through communication tools like a project launch, press releases or social media platforms. Applicants should note that specific performance measurements will be agreed with you if you are approved and these will be included in your letter of offer. Section 5. In this section you are required to confirm that you are in a position to submit a copy of your organisation's constitution with your completed application. Applications that are received without a constitution will be deemed ineligible and will be removed from the process. You should insert the name of your organisation and it must be signed by either the chairperson or chief executive. Before submission, please check the following. That you have fully completed sections 1 to 5. That all appropriate boxes have been ticked. That the application form has been signed by either the chairperson or chief executive of your organisation. That you have completed Appendix 1, the budget breakdown, and have included it with your application form and that you have included a copy of your organisation's constitution with your application. Finally, we are interested in finding out how you became aware of the Police Property Fund and would ask that you tell us in this box. It could be through your PCSP, through social media or through word of mouth. 
If you need any additional information in relation to completing your application form, you can contact the programme team by emailing us at policepropertyfund at nipolicingboard.org.uk. Good luck.